Today's world of technology is completely dominated by machines and their behavior is controlled by the software powering it. Now will the machines behave exactly as we want them to every time and everywhere? The answer to these questions lie in software testing. Hi everyone, this is Shantani from Edureka and today we are going to talk about functional testing. Now before we begin with our functional testing tutorial, let's have a look at today's agenda. So first I'll tell you what is software testing and then we will move on and have a look at the types of software testing. Then we will discuss about what is functional testing and also the difference between functional testing and non-functional testing. Next up we will have a look at all the steps involved in functional testing and then we will have a look at all the different types of this testing. Now moving on we will also have a look at the different techniques involved in functional testing and the tools that are used. Finally, I'll end this session with an example of how we use the Selenium tool in order to perform functional testing. So let's get started. Now software testing is a process of evaluating the functionality of a software application to find any software bugs. It basically checks whether the developed software met the specified requirements or not and identifies any defect in the software in order to produce a quality product. Now let's have a look at the different types of software testing. So software testing is basically divided into two major types. That is the functional testing and non-functional testing. And for today's session, our focus will be on the functional testing type. So what is functional testing? Now this particular testing is defined as a type of testing which verifies that each function of the software application operates in conformance with the requirements specification. Now this testing mainly involves the black box testing and it is not concerned about the source code of the application. Now each and every functionality of the system is tested by providing appropriate input, verifying the output and comparing the actual results with the expected results. So now let's have a look at the differences between functional testing and non-functional testing. So we will have a look at the parameters such as the objective, area of focus, ease of testing, functionality and execution. So the first parameter is the objective. Now in functional testing it is carried out in order to verify the software actions. Whereas in non-functional testing it is used to verify the performance of the software. Next up is the area of focus. Now functional testing basically concentrates on the user requirement whereas the non-functional testing concentrates mostly on the user expectation. The next parameter is ease of testing. Now functional testing is mostly used for black box testing whereas non-functional testing is an easy way to execute the white box testing. Now in case of functionality the functional testing describes what the product does. Whereas the non-functional testing describes how the product works. Now the final one is the execution. Now the functional testing always takes place before the non-functional testing. Whereas the non-functional testing is performed right after the functional testing has been completed. Now these were some of the differences between the functional testing and the non-functional testing. Now let's have a look at some of the advantages of functional testing that makes it more preferable. So this testing reproduces or is a replica of what the actual system is. That is it is basically a replica of what the product is in the live environment. Now testing is focused on the specifications as per the customer usage. That is system specifications, operating system, browsers, etc. Also it does not work on any if and buts or any assumptions about the structure of the system. So basically there are no assumptions for this testing. Next up this testing also ensures to deliver a high quality product which meets the customer requirement and makes sure that the customer is satisfied with the end results. It also ensures to deliver a bug free product which has all the functionalities working as per the customer requirement. Finally the risk based testing is also done to decrease the chances of any kind of risk in the product. So now that we have seen all the advantages of functional testing, let's move ahead and have a look at the different steps involved in this functional testing. Now the very first step involved is to determine the functionality of the product that needs to be tested 
and it includes testing the main functionalities error condition and messages usability testing that is whether the product is user friendly or not now the next step is to create the input data for the functionality to be tested as per the requirement specification later from the requirement specification the output is determined for the functionality under test this is the step 3 here now in the step 4 the prepared test cases are executed and finally the actual output that is the output after executing the test case and expected output are compared to find whether the functionality is working as expected or not now functional testing has many categories and these can be used based on the scenario so let's have a look at some of the most prominent types of functional testing first up we have the unit testing Now unit testing is usually performed by a developer who writes different code units that could be related or unrelated to achieve a particular functionality. This usually entails writing unit tests which would call the methods in each unit and validate those when the required parameters are passed and its return value is as expected. Now code coverage is an important part of unit testing where the test cases need to exist to cover the line coverage code path coverage and the method coverage next up we have the sanity testing now testing that is done to ensure that all the major and vital functionalities of the application or system are working correctly now this is generally done after a smoke test so what is smoke testing now the testing that is done after each build is released to test in order to ensure build stability is known as the smoke testing It is also called as build verification testing. Then we have the regression tests. Now testing performed to ensure that adding new code enhancements fixing of bugs is not breaking the existing functionality or causing any instability and still works according to the specifications is known as the regression test. Now regression tests need not be as extensive as the actual functional tests. but it should ensure just the amount of coverage to certify that the functionality is stable next up is the integration tests now when the system relies on multiple functional modules that might individually work perfectly but have to work coherently when clubbed together to achieve an end to end scenario validation of such scenarios is called integration testing and the final one is the usability testing Now the product is exposed to the actual customer in a production like an environment and they test the product. The user's comfort is derived from this and the feedback is taken. This is similar to that of user acceptance testing. So these were some of the important types of functional testing. Now moving on, let's have a look at the different functional testing techniques. So basically we have two main techniques that are known as the positive testing and negative testing. Now in positive testing we have the end user based or the system tests. Now the system under test may have many components which when coupled together achieve the user scenario. Then we have the decision based tests. Now the decision based tests are centered around the ideology of the possible outcomes of the system when a particular condition is met. And the alternate flow tests are basically run to validate all the possible ways that exist. other than the main flow to accomplish a function now in negative testing we have the equivalence test now in equivalence partitioning the test data are segregated into various partitions called the equivalence data classes now data in each partition must behave in the same way therefore only one condition needs to be tested then we have the boundary value tests now the boundary tests imply data limits to the application and validate how it behaves therefore if the inputs are supplied beyond the boundary values then it is considered to be a negative testing so a minimum of 6 characters for the user sets the boundary limit then we have the ad hoc tests now when most of the bugs are uncovered through the above techniques ad hoc tests are a great way to uncover any discrepancies that are not observed earlier Now these are performed with the mindset of breaking the system and see if it responds gracefully. So these were the different techniques involved in functional testing. Now let's move on and have a look at the various tools that are used for this particular testing. Now you can explore the best tool based on your project requirements. Almost every high level company is working on automation in today's world. So just being a manual tester will affect one's career for sure. 
So you need to know something called automation to boost your skill and get shortlisted for some good companies. So now is the right time to know more about the need for functional testing tools. But which tools we should opt is really a confusing one. So let's have a look at some of the top most functional testing tools. So first we have the Ranarek Studio. Now this one is a commercial Windows GUI test automation tool that supports functional UI testing on desktop, web and mobile applications. It is used by over 4000 companies worldwide. Now Ranarek Studio is easy for beginners with a codeless click and go interface and helpful wizards but powerful for automation experts with a full IDE. Next up we have Selenium. Now Selenium is an open source functional testing tool and one can download and use it without any cost. It is supported by the Apache 2.0 license. It is a web application testing product and it accepts many languages to write its test scripts and the languages can be C Sharp, Java, Perl, PHP, Python, etc. It can be deployed on Windows, Mac OS and Linux. Now this one is also one of the most preferable tools for functional testing. Now moving on next up we have the test IO. Now for this make sure that your web apps websites and mobile apps work everywhere by running functional tests on real devices real browsers and under real world conditions. Now running functional tests with test IO lets you call upon the skill and insight of thousands of testing professionals to improve the quality of your websites and mobile apps. Over 200 customer obsessed organizations rely on the power and flexibility of test IO to ship high quality software faster. Next up is the Telerik. Now this is one of the most simple and user friendly testing tools in the market. It provides functional exploratory performance as well as load testing solutions. Though it's not free its subscription to download the complete tool along with its license is available at a reasonable amount. Now it comes with Visual Studio plugin. Hence in order to bring the best out of this tool one must know the visual script. Finally we have the CUI test. Now CUI test is a Microsoft tool. To use this tool the user shall need Visual Studio 2013 virtual machine which is also a Microsoft product. Now by using the CUI test tool one can completely automate tests for validating the functionality and the behavior of the application. Now before considering this tool one must check for the latest cost of the CUI test tool and VSTS licenses cost with Microsoft. Now out of all these tools Selenium is one of the most preferred tools when it comes to functional testing. So let's have a look what makes it the most preferable one. So let's talk about some of the advantages of Selenium. So Selenium is basically an open source tool which is used for automating the test cases carried out on web browsers or the web applications that are being tested using any web browser. So it's an open source tool which supports cross browsing and automates web applications. So now let's see why do we need Selenium IDE for automation testing. Now Selenium is basically an open source and also there is no licensing cost involved which is a major advantage over other testing tools. Now the other major reasons behind Selenium's ever growing popularity are about their test cases OS platform and browser support. So the test scripts can be written in any of these programming languages such as Java, Python, C Sharp, PHP, Ruby, Perl and .NET. And the tests can be carried out in any of these OS such as the Windows, Mac or Linux. Also the tests can be carried out using any browser that is the Mozilla Firefox, Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Safari or Opera. So now that you know what is functional testing and also you have learned about the best tool that is used for performing functional testing. Let's have a look at a small example that will help you understand how we are performing this functional testing with the help of Selenium. So now let's have a look at the example. So here we will be performing functional testing with the help of Selenium. So let's take the example of our Edureka blog page. So now if I want to click this particular element let's see how I can do this with the help of Selenium. So now this can be done with the help of locators. So first let's see what are locators in Selenium. Now the locator can be termed as an address that identifies a web element uniquely within the web page. 
Now locators are basically the HTML properties of a web element which tells Selenium about the web element it needs to perform the action on. Selenium uses locators to interact with the web elements on the web page. Now there is a diverse range of web elements like the text box, ID, radio button, etc. And identifying these elements has always been a very tricky subject and thus it requires an accurate and effective approach. Thereby we can say that more effective the locator is more stable will be the automation script. Essentially every selenium command requires locators to find the web elements. Thus to identify these web elements accurately and precisely we have different types of locators namely the ID name link text CSS selector partial link text and XPath. So now in this particular case I am using the link text to connect to the particular link. So here we will be clicking on the interview questions and select on inspect. Now here we will get to see a link text named as the interview questions. So here I'll copy this and use the link text locator to locate the element. Now before that let me first tell you what is link text. Now all the hyperlinks on a web page can be identified using link text. Now the links on a web page can be determined with the help of anchor tag. Now the anchor tag is used to create the hyperlinks on a web page and the text between the opening and closing of anchor tags constitutes the link text. So let's switch back and see how we are going to do it. Now this is the example that we are going to use for our test. So first of all I have created a class named example and after that I have set the property where I have used the Chrome driver. And next up I have used the system dot set property in order to launch my Chrome driver here. So now this is the path where I have saved my Chrome driver. Now Chrome driver is very important when you are using Google Chrome. Next here I have added another object for Chrome driver. And next up I have used driver dot manage dot window dot maximize in order to maximize the window. And next up there is delete all cookies where I have deleted all the previous cookies that existed. And next up I have specified an implicitly wait time as 30 seconds where the page would wait for 30 seconds until it is loaded. And next up I have used the driver dot get in order to navigate to our edureka block page. Now using the driver dot find element by link text locator I'm trying to click on to the interview questions link. Now let's run this code and check the output. So now here you can see that the Chrome driver launched the Google Chrome and navigated to our edureka page. As soon as it entered the edureka block page it went to the interview questions link. And here you can see the output. So basically whatever we would have done manually has been done with the help of the automated tools. It navigated through our blog page and also went inside the interview questions link all by itself. So this is how functional testing takes place with the help of Selenium. Now in order to know more about the Selenium testing tool you can check out the Selenium tutorial and also keep an eye on the playlist of Selenium and software testing. So this was all about today's session. Do let us know about your opinion in the comment section below. Till then thank you and happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!